All right, y'all, let's jump into it here, y'all. So, hey, welcome to this training of the Cash Flow Club. Here with your friend, your boy, uh, your mentor, your coach, your entrepreneur CFO here, Perry Jeffries. So, hey, super excited to jump into this training today. Um, if you're not aware, September is significant. Significant for a couple of different reasons. One, it's my birthday month. So turn up, let's have some fun this month. Two, it is Life Insurance Awareness Month. And I know, I know, life insurance is not the most exciting topic. Like who wants to talk about life insurance, right? Because when we think about life insurance, we've been programmed to think that it's, you know, symbolic of death and symbolic of, you know, mourning and, and, and things of that nature. But we want you to think about life insurance differently, especially as an entrepreneur, because life insurance can actually end up on both sides of the balance sheets, right? So in some cases, when we think about life insurance, we think of it as, man, it's just an expense, right? But life insurance can also be an asset. That's right. And the asset is something on your balance sheet that can actually create income. So with that being said, we're going to start this uh, uh, kickoff with just a simple level set explanation and address one of the big debates that's out there in the world that's been around for forever. What's better, term life insurance or whole life slash cash value life insurance? And because you're part of the club, I'm going to share this here with you and hopefully it makes sense to you. But what we want to do is first make sure we get crystal clear on here because we're going to do some additional trainings on the topic, uh, but we first got to understand the difference between the two because these are the core fundamentals of life insurance. You have term life insurance and it's a lot of different terms. It may be, shoot, probably 10, 15, 20 different types of term insurance policies out there as far as what they what they do. And then you have cash value or you know what I'm saying, whole life policies, which again, there's a ton of different ones out there. So we're not gonna dive into the specifics of all the different ones, but what we are gonna get into is how these two are fundamentally different and why they should stop being compared to each other. So I know you've heard the questions, right? Hey, or heard the comments, hey, term, insurance is better than like a uh, whole life insurance right you've heard the, you know what I'm saying the uh, uh talking heads say buy term and invest the rest we've heard that right buy term is inexpensive and then take that money that you would have put into a whole life policy uh and and put it into the stock market or a mutual fund or something along those lines right but then you've heard people say hey buy whole life is better than term because term goes away and whole life is permanent insurance it doesn't go away though you continue to pay on it you pay on it at the rate that you buy it in at usually when you're younger and you're healthier so you want to go with the term i'm sorry you want to go with the whole life and also to the whole life has a cash value right then you hear the people here on the terms on the term side say well you're throwing money away because you'd be making a lot more money in the markets and and then you're making in, in this 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 whole life policy right unfortunately whenever i hear these conversations it's a huge indicator to me that people aren't really educated or really aware of the benefits of the two so i like to make sure i articulate it this way this is term this is whole they serve different purposes. Stop comparing them. It's like comparing a spoon and a knife. So if we were to go and have a steak dinner right now, if we were to go have a steak dinner right now, you know, we go over to Smith and Whiskey's and we jump in there and like, hey, we want, you know what I'm saying, get us some, some fillets or some tomahawks, whatever the case may be. And, you know, first thing they bring out to us is a starter soup. So probably some lobster bisque if, 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 if it's my family, right? Well, what are you going to grab? What utensil are you going to use to eat the lobster bisque? Are you going to grab the fork? Or are you going to grab the spoon? Hopefully, you're grabbing the spoon. Because if you're eating lobster bisque with a fork, that is some really, really thick lobster bisque. And you're going to look crazy trying to eat lobster bisque with a spoon. I mean, so with the fork. So hopefully, you're using a spoon. OK, so the spoon in this case is term. What is the purpose of term? Term is there to give you a inexpensive death benefit, period. OK, let me say that again. Term is there to give you an inexpensive death benefit, period. So it's there. So, hey, 
you know, uh, my wife, when, before we got married, I think she was, what, 35 years old at the time. Uh, we got a term policy owner, healthy 35-year-old woman. We got a million dollars worth of coverage on her. I believe it was for 45 bucks, $45. That's less than what we spend during the first three minutes of happy hour when we go out to eat, right? So understand something here is there to give inexpensive death benefit. This death benefit can be used for a couple of different reasons. It could be used to, you know, replace your income. If you make, you know, $50,000 a year, our recommendation that you always have anywhere between 10 to 15 years of your income cover. Because guess what? If you die, not only does your family miss you, but they're going to miss your income. If your home was bought on your both of your incomes and one of you die, now, you know what I'm saying, you run the risk of losing your home. So this replaces your income. This also can be used to, you know what I'm saying, pay off your house. We highly recommend that as soon as you get a mortgage on a house, one of the first things you should do is get mortgage protection in the form of life insurance so that if you die, that now that mortgage balance now can be paid down to zero and be gifted to your champ, to your family or to your children or whatever the case may be. Right. Also, too, this can be used to fund college education. If something should happen to my wife and, you know, we have received a million dollars that can now go and 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 fund the children's college education. So, again, this is inexpensive death benefit. And as with all, you know what I'm saying, uh, I won't say all, but the majority of life insurance is out there, you have to qualify for it. So it's always going to be cheaper, the healthier and the younger you are. So guess what? Today, as you're watching this video, it's the youngest you will ever be. You're not going to get any younger tomorrow. So if life insurance is the cheapest when you're younger, you're best to get it in place when you're young, right? totally makes sense. So again, it's for the death benefit. This is our lobster bisque. Okay. Now let's jump over here to, uh, you know, they brought out our lobster bisque. We absolutely loved it. It was amazing. Big chunks of lobster in there. Now we got our steak. Would you eat a steak with a spoon or with a fork? I would love to see you try to eat your steak with a spoon, right? They'll probably throw you off the restaurant. So you're probably going to use your fork, right? Because it serves a different purpose. So now you got your fork and your knife and you're eating and you're eating your steak. Perfect. All right. So whole life cash value is not ideal for uh, uh, paying for a large death benefit. Because if you need a million or two million or $3 million in death benefit, it makes more sense to use term. But where whole life comes into play, this is a true asset because it does have a cash value. Now you're gonna hear people talk about a whole bunch of kind of whole life policies. We, you know, there, there's a thousand different ones. We can talk about a whole life 100, a pay up 20, a paid up 10. You know what I'm saying? You got your folks in there who are doing you know, those index, uh, 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 index universal life plans and IUAs and things of that nature. We're not gonna get into the weeds on this particular train. But what whole life does is the money that you put in, a portion of it goes towards insurance and a portion goes towards a savings type of vehicle if you're looking at a mutual company like a mass mutual like who we use or northwestern mutual things of that nature you're typically dealing with a company that is paying a pretty significant dividend anywhere between say five and seven percent historically right and those may change you know that's something that you want to monitor but you're putting money in and your monthly premium is being split between insurance as well as going into this bucket, you know what I'm saying, which is going to be receiving dividends, right? So, you know, with that being said, this is how now you can become your own bank. This is now an asset. So what's lovely about it, depending on how your whole life is structured, you can go into that whole life when it has cash value and pull those dollars out. You can pull those dollars out in the form of a loan. Let me ask you this. Do you pay taxes on loan money? No, you do not. So now why that money is growing in there is growing tax deferred and it's coming out tax free. 
you can use that money again for college while you're living. You can use that money to buy a house while you're living. You can use that money to purchase a car while you're living. You can use that money to refinance debt while you're living. Actually, a, a, a friend of mine uh, who is uh, super popular right now uh, because she's not the cover off the ball in the tech space will tell you that she initially funded her business, bootstrapped her business with the whole life policy she was advised uh, to buy when she, you know what I'm saying, in her early 20s and was able to take that asset that, you know, whatever it was, 10, 20 grand and use that to start her business. And now she's been on the cover of Black Enterprise magazine and all over the place and folks not knowing that it was funded initially with whole life. Can you do that with term? No, because it's not an asset it's an expense that pays out later on right but with this product you know what I'm saying with a whole life product you can actually access funds now so how we use it with our financial planning when we're working with clients is whole life is a is, is another asset on the books so you have you know savings accounts which right now are paying less than one percent I, I guarantee, I won't say I guarantee, but here's the deal. You let me run an illustration for a whole life product. I can get you more than 1% on a whole life cash value product without a shadow of a doubt. So one, it's going to give you a better savings vehicle. Two, it's going to allow you to bank on yourself. Three, it can give you a guaranteed income which you can pull out of, which comes out tax-free, almost functioning like kind of like a Roth account in a sense, right? And for individuals who are extremely wealthy, this is their go-to retirement vehicle. It's called a LERP, a life insurance retirement plan. Because if you're, you know, a, a, a brain surgeon or a high income earner, you're capped out on how much money you can put into your retirement plan. So you have to have another vehicle where you can dump money with the opportunity to grow, but more importantly, be able to pull the money out in a form of income someplace down the road. So again, it's a conversation of, 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 of having a conversation between a spoon and a fork. So when we hear people saying that one is better than the other one, it's very misleading to you as the entrepreneur or you as the consumer. Now, you may be asking, Pete, why are you going through this during uh, you know, saying Life Insurance Awareness Month and, and in the Cash Flow Club with entrepreneurs? Because now that you understand these vehicles, we can talk into how to fund a trust and then having a trust that may actually own your business to give you uh, uh, other layers of protection. We may be talking about, hey, how can you, you know what I'm saying, invest your profit account or your tax account in such a way where we you won't lose money, but you can do better than the sorry interest rate that you're learning, that you're earning in your um, or earning in your bank account. Because if all of you are set up the right way through the past program via the profit first methodology, you have funds set aside. And we want to make sure that not only is every dollar employed, but every dollar you're getting the most out of those dollars that they're actually full-time employees and they're working and they're actually delivering to you, right? So now we have these different vehicles that we can look at, right? We, we, we need to talk about buy-sell agreements. Hey, you built this business, but what happens to the business when you die? You know what I'm saying? Do we need that, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, buy life insurance in order to be able to sell that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, I'm going to go through the, uh, the technical piece of the buy-sell agreement, but it's a way where you protect your family, where insurance is bought, you know what I'm saying, by whoever's going to be buying your business. And when you die, if you say, hey, the business is worth a million, they bought a million dollar, you know what I'm saying, uh, term policy, they get that million dollar term and then they then and then your spouse then sells the business to them for that million, that million dollars. So like that's how we need to start looking at life insurance, right? These are tools. And quite honestly, some of the most important tools you're going to find when it comes to wealth creation are going to be life insurance. Understand that, you know, there's life insurance vehicles, which can give you guaranteed income in the future in a form of annuities. So it's like all of these different, like, think about it right now, uh, entrepreneur. If you were to sell your business, so let's say forecast, you know, whatever it is, five, 10, 15 years down the road, and you sell your business for a couple million, where can you put that money where you have peace of mind that you won't lose a dime, that the principal is protected, but you but will still generate enough interest for you, uh, uh, income for you to live off of? Can you do it in a mutual fund? No, you're going to have fluctuations, right? Can you, can you do that in an individual stock? 
You, you can, but you're going to have fluctuations. So where can you put that money and know like, huh, this is how I can you know, uh, uh, sell my business and live off of this nest egg. Let that resonate for a second. Many of you have heard of pension plans, right? So you've heard of pension plans. So if you work, you know, for the state or the government, whatnot, you know, if you work for the government, you know what I'm saying? They have the FERS, F-E-R-S. If you work for your state, like in the state of Ohio, they have OPERS. If you work for, you know, this, uh, 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 if you're a teacher, you may have S-T-R-S, right? Well, any of those individuals who have retired and received a monthly pension, before they receive a pension, they have to sign some paperwork that says, I want the annuity option. What's it an annuity? An annuity is a life insurance product. Wow. Let's think about this. How about the individuals, you know what I'm saying, that we've seen, you know what I'm saying, heard of uh, win the lottery or the super lotto. And they say, hey, you got an option. You can get either get a lump sum or a guaranteed monthly income. Well, when they choose to guarantee monthly income, guess what that is? That's an annuity product. That's a life insurance product, y'all. So understand, life insurance just isn't about, well, I got to put this in place because when I die, I want people to be able to bury me. You know what I'm saying? That should be the baseline foundation of life insurance because that's just being a responsible adult. But life insurance can be used to give you guaranteed income, to allow you to bank on yourself, to allow your business to be sold, to be able to fund your trust. So many different things you can do with life insurance. But we first got to understand the basics and the fundamentals. So that concludes the training today. Um, let me see if there's any questions here on the Facebook piece if we need to get into Nope. You know what I'm saying? We got Sasha on there, 10 to 15 years of income. Yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? So you make $50,000 a year, you need at least a half a million because if you're the, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're not the prime breadwinner, right? Yeah, but, you, but you have a joint household income. When you die, your income dies with you. So the responsible thing to do is to leave your spouse and your children with at least 10 to 15 years of your income that they get prepaid up on the front end. So absolutely, y'all. So let me see if there's any other questions on here. All right, cool. So if you're catching this replay, y'all, make sure you ask any questions on a replay. Obviously, I'll be able to jump in here and answer any questions for you. And uh, tune in for the rest of this month. I'm going to do some additional trainings here because it is Life Insurance Awareness Month for you guys. But let's get the party started. All right, y'all. Perry Jeffries here, the Entrepreneur CFO. Hope that bless you and your family. We'll talk to you here soon. Peace.